Morning. And we want to bring in Michael Scheuer now. He is the former head of the bin Laden unit who knows uh, copious amounts of details uh, about uh, Osama bin Laden and all of these details. Michael, nice to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What, what is your first impression when you look at these videos, namely the one that we're all referencing where he's sitting on a chair, a blanket over his shoulders, watching himself on television? What is your first impression? Well, my first impression has been the reaction to it, that uh, somehow we, we can't seem to tell the difference between celebrity and, per, and, and leadership. What he's doing here is what we knew he always did, which was be extremely conscious of how he looked on the media, to look as a leader, whether in camouflage gear on the battlefield if he was uh, photographed outside, or as kind of a, um, uh, a more stately look, statesman-like looking figure uh, inside. He's also listening to his rhetoric. He was obsessed with using very, very precise and absolutely gram grammatically correct Arabic. He was addressing a Muslim world that's largely illiterate. And, and oral communication and precise oral communication is very much expected from an Arab leader. Now, that's a, an important point, Michael. And I want to mention here, right as we start this, that Fox News is only going to be showing still photos from the bin Laden compound. The videos were there, and there's no audio. We're not going to play any audio because we don't want uh, Fox News to act as any sort of a propaganda arm of getting this message out there from whatever Osama bin Laden was trying to do. So it's an important point. We're only going to show still photos from inside the compound. And that was also what was provided to us from the government. This is the information that they gave us that they're receiving from the compound. We'll be getting a lot more information in the days and weeks to come as they choose to release it. Um, but, Michael, how much did this compound mean in the total operation? Was this really the active center of Al-Qaeda? Well, it seems to me that, that uh, what we're learning is that the kind of blithe assumption that so many people in the government have issued in the last 10 years, that he was isolated, didn't know what was going on, couldn't communicate with his organization, is turning out to be somewhat less than correct. And as they leak more and more information, uh, it seems to me that we're going to learn that uh, he was what he was since 1995 or 96, very much a hands-on man. And I also wanted to make one other point about the, the old man in the blanket and the, in the lousy conditions. Uh -huh. I think you have to remember that his followers view him as sort of a Robin Hood, a man who didn't have to live like that, a man who came from a, a family where he would have inherited part of $40 billion. So any kind of sort of roughing it reinforces his image as kind of a, uh, uh, a Robin Hood or kind of a man who gave up greatness for uh, a life of, a, of an insurgent. Let's go through some of these points here, which is uh, he was very active in operations. We can throw these up here on the screen. These are some of the highlights of what was uncovered there. He was very active in operations with al-Qaeda. So he was receiving all of these thumb drives from uh, these couriers, and so he wasn't actively connected to the Internet. Is this something that the CIA was aware of? Well, I think more less the CIA than the NSA. NSA is the National Security Agency and collects SIGINT and emails and the rest of that stuff, and they were very actively looking for him. The one thing that I would say, sir, is when we talk about couriers, we often think of somebody flying or going from Singapore to London. But in terms of, of actual operations, uh, someone could have picked up a message from Osama bin Laden out of that building and gone 30 or 40 minutes down the road to an Internet cafe and sent it from there. Hmm. And there are a lot of Internet cafes in, in that part of Pakistan. And so if, even if we picked up the message, it would not have come from bin Laden's location. It would have come from a public facility. As we go through some of the other bullet points on this, uh, bin Laden had an interest in transportation and infrastructure, relied heavily on that courier network you mentioned, dyed his beard for these videos, jealously guarded his image. You see him turning the channels looking for himself. My question is, Clayton mentioned no audio on these tapes. Why did the government release them? And they, You can't glean a whole lot from them. There's no audio, no real information. Is it to kind of demystify what we all know and, and no. some people think of bin Laden? No, the government has lied to the American people since 9-11. What they don't want you to hear again is that Osama bin Laden doesn't care, or, and his organization and his allies do not care about liberty in America, democracy in America, gender equality in, in America, or elections. What, what bin Laden was saying on the tape that they're talking about almost certainly was, we don't care how you think or how you live. We want you out of our world, and we will attack you until you stop doing that.
Hmm. And of course, Mr. Bush, Mr. Clinton, and Mr. Obama have consistently told America this is about how we live and how we think rather than what we do. Leon Panetta released a statement, of course, about the material found in the compound. Michael, we want to get your take on that. He said the material it found in the compound only further confirms how important it was to go after bin Laden. Since 9-11, this is what the American people have expected of us in this critical operation we delivered. Um, is that, uh, yeah, I, you know, I was thinking as this was unfolding, are we going to start to see some rallying from the government saying that this guy was more important perhaps than he was operationally? When you hear a statement like that, do you take that away or do you say, no, this guy is the head of Al-Qaeda and we had to get him? Oh, I think we had to get him, sir, but I think, I think Mr. Padana is exactly right. Uh, and, and what it means is that we've been whistling past the graveyard uh, for the past de te decade and saying that he was not important and that his organization was dispersed <coughs> and splintered and falling apart. If he was receiving thumb drives from different organizations around the world, and they're now on four continents, uh, one would have to assume that the cohesiveness of the organization and its relation to headquarters was much stronger than what the government has told us over the past 10 years. Michael, uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney also weighed in on the developments in the recent week. Uh, take a listen to what he had to say. Well, I think uh, you've got to give him a lot of credit for making the decision to have uh, SEAL Team 6 conduct the raid that got Bin Laden. Um, there's no question that was his responsibility, and uh, I think he handled it well. I still am concerned about the fact that I think a lot of the techniques that we had used to keep the country safe for more than seven years are no longer available, that they've been sort of taken off the table, if you will. And we'll be hearing more from Dick Cheney on Fox News Sunday, of course. But part of this is that all this intel is coming in. Do we have a certain amount of time, a window of opportunity in which to use that information and to act on it? Very much the case, ma'am. Uh, uh, Al-Qaeda is like uh, CIA or any intelligence service, really. When they lose a man, especially a senior leader, and they know he had documents or electronic uh, uh, paraphernalia with him, they, they assume a complete compromise. And they begin to change email addresses, phone numbers, credit card numbers, um, uh, locations, safe houses, uh, codes. All, all, everything that goes into running the organization gets changed. And so we do have a short window, probably a, you know, a week or two weeks at the most. So I, I imagine the CIA and the military are moving as quickly as they can. And maybe on the top of that list is getting the supposed number two, uh, Ayman Zawahiri. Maybe that's the guy we have to get with the intel that they found at that compound. What do we know about him? Is he likely the successor to, Obama bin, uh, to Osama bin Laden, or is he this divisive figure that many don't respect throughout the organization? Well, I, I'm not sure it's a matter of respect, sir. It's a matter of just personal uh, abrasiveness and dislike for him. I think he's respected as a leader, as a man, another man who gave up a very lucrative profession to fight for the last 30 years. He'll certainly be the interim leader, but there is an, a really an excellent crop of, ver of next generation uh, leaders in Al-Qaeda who are now spread out over Afghanistan, Yemen, uh, and, and, and other places around the world. And I, I would add that Mr. Cheney has one very good point. The result, uh, uh, some of the information that captured, that resulted in bin Laden's being killed came from people that were put into Guantanamo and other places by the CIA's rendition program. Now leaving uh, the, the whole question of how they're interrogated uh, can be left aside to another time. But the President Obama stopped the rendition program without having anything to replace it. The net result of that is the, the Al-Qaeda people who are in uh, prison are very much getting long in the tooth regarding the information they can share with us or give to us or, or have uh, taken from them. And so without a fresh, a fresh channel, a fresh flow of new prisoners, we are very much blinded. That's a, that's a great point, and it's something I don't think a lot of people think about. They're in prison for many, many years, and they don't have access to that terror network. Michael, right. we want to get you to take uh, your take on John Yu. He was on uh, Huckabee's show last night. And whether or not the United States much has been made about the raid, and should we have tried to capture Osama bin Laden and interrogate him, I mean, it's much the same way that Saddam Hussein was captured. Here's John Yu on Huckabee last night, a former deputy assistant attorney. Take a listen. I think this administration would rather kill al-Qaeda terrorists and leaders because it avoids a lot of the difficult questions like detention and Guantanamo Bay. 
but it's a, a, the loss of an enormous intelligence opportunity because, as I said, the most important information we get about al-Qaeda and have gotten have come through interrogations. The most important person we could have captured is Osama bin Laden. Would he have given up anything? My own guess, and that's all it is, sir, is that he would not have. He would have gladly been tortured to death. We don't do that, but he, he would have went to God uh, quietly without telling us. And the one thing we didn't, anything rather, telling us anything, and the, the one thing we didn't want is him in any courtroom speaking uh, to the Arab world for a couple of years, whether it was a civilian or a military courtroom. He did the exact right thing. Indeed, if President Clinton had given the CIA the same authority President Obama gave to the, to the, to the SEALs, Osama bin Laden would have been dead sometime between May of 1998 and May of 1999. So what's our biggest concern now? Should we fear al-Qaeda? Should we fear a potential attack on 9-11 on our train system? Or will that organization change dramatically now that UBL is gone? I don't think it'll change dramatically, sir, but I think there will be a break in time here. I think the, the, the most uh, danger right now is from individuals who are angered by his death and take revenge uh, off their own hook. Mm. And, and that's, of course, the hardest thing to break. But I, I think we're going to find out in the weeks ahead as the leaks continue that al-Qaeda is more cohesive than we thought and with its allies still poses a tremendous threat to the United States. One that's increasing because there's an increasing number of young Muslims, uh, young Muslim males in English-speaking countries, America, Canada, Britain, who are willing to take up arms against their own native land. You know, much has been made of in the past week also about the disbandment of the bin Laden unit. Alex Station, as it was called, and, and the breaking up of that and the, re the reorganizing of resources to go after bin Laden. Was that reorganization the reason we were able to grab him, or was that just part and parcel of the change in the intelligence community? You know, I'm biased on that question, sir. If it did anything, it slowed down our ability to get him. But the, the work of the CIA to get uh, the intelligence package together that, that provided the SEALs with the opportunity to do what they did uh, is first-rate work. It is extraordinary work. And... Uh, uh, the bureaucrats always slow things down. You know, everybody says, congratulate the president. I'll tell you what, it's the young men and women on the ground from the intelligence services and the military who do these things. All the president needs to do is to do what he was elected to do, and that's to protect America. Michael Scheuer, we really appreciate your expertise this morning, former head of the bin Laden unit. No better person to have here this morning to take us through all of this information. Great to see you, Michael. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Glad to have you. We head now to the massive flooding in.